Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to be solving problem 1761. It says, if a horizontal force of P equals to 100 newtons is applied to the 300 kilogram rail of cable, determine its initial angular acceleration. The rail rests on rollers at A and B and has a radius of duration of K sub O equal to 0 0.6 meters. All right, so what do we have in here? Well, we have this reel, we have attached this rope, and this rope is applying this force P, which is equal to 100 newtons. Now, we're also told that we have um, normal forces in here. Well, our reel is resting at A and B, so we're gonna have some normal forces in here. And we're asked to find the angular acceleration, okay? So like always, I like to start by writing out our givens. So our first given is equal to that our um, force P is equal to 100 newtons. Then that our mass of our reel is equal to 300 kilograms. And last, we have our duration, our radius of duration at my point O equal to 0 0.6 meters, okay? After this, let's do some free body diagram. So we have a free body diagram for my reel so we have our circle shape and it's gonna look something like this with our point O in here. The initial force we have is our force P going to the right and it's equal to 100 Newtons. We also have our normal forces at A and B as I stated before. So we got our normal at A and we got our normal IB. We are told that these two normal forces are 20 degrees with respect to the vertical axis individually. So like this. We're also told that the distance from here to our rope is 0 0.75 meters and the actual radius of our reel is equal to one meter. So I believe that's all for our free body diagram. Now, since we're in chapter 17, and we are in the chapter regarding our rotation about an axis, we're going to go ahead and take a look at those equations in our notes. So as we can see, we have that, hey, if, we, if you want to find the angular acceleration, we can do a summatory of forces in the tangential. So we can find our acceleration or we can do a summatory of forces of moments about my um, center of gravity and find our acceleration like this, right? So knowing that we're given the radius of duration and how is that important? Well, we can find our moment of inertia with our radius of duration using this formula. So we're going to go ahead and utilize these two formulas to find our problem. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we have that our moment of inertia is equal to our mass times our radius of duration square. And if we plug our numbers in, we have 300 kilograms multiplied by 0 0.6 meters square and this should be equal to, so if we plug it into our calculator, will be equal to 108. The units should be kilograms times meter square. And then in order to find our acceleration, we're gonna do a summatory of moments about my point O, which in this case is our center of gravity, right? We're gonna assume that going counterclockwise is positive. And this should be equal to our moment of inertia multiplied by our acceleration. So what do we have? Well, we do our summatory of moments about my point O. We have three forces. The first one is Na. Well, its line of action passes through my point O, therefore doesn't create any moment. Similarly, our force Nb, normal of B, passes through my point O, so we don't care about these two forces. Lastly, our force 100 newtons, so we have the distance, which is the 0 0.75 meters. So we're gonna have 100 
multiply by 0 0.75 and the direction is negative because it's going clockwise and I'm assuming counterclockwise is positive so we got negative and this should be equal to our moment of inertia which is 108 kilograms multiply by our acceleration finally we can solve for our acceleration angular acceleration we're gonna have negative 100 multiplied by 0 0.75 meters all divided by 108 okay and if we plug this into our calculator we're gonna get a total of negative 0 0.69 Four, and the units should be in radians per second square. Now, what does this negative mean in this case? Well, this negative just means that our acceleration is also equal to 0 0.694 radians per second square, but going in the clockwise direction, right? Because we initially assume that counterclockwise is positive. Therefore, if it's negative, that means we're going clockwise direction and just like that we found the problem the solution for our problem so i hope you guys like this video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one